Hey guys, welcome back to the Calibrate Tools channel. Today we're going to talk about how to use a masking machine. Now what is a masking machine? Well, have you ever tried to prep your house for paint and you have to mask everything off? Well, this tool makes it a hundred times easier. See you right after this. <music> Like most jobs, the prep takes the longest. Prepping for paint is by far the longest and most tedious part of the painting process. You gotta tape off windows, doors, lights, sockets, areas that aren't gonna have the same color. You can do this with painter's tape and masking paper alone, but that will take even longer. A masking machine will help speed up the process with its rolling and cutting features because the tape and paper are pre-attached on the roll. And the pocket hook or belt hook adds even more convenience so you don't have to juggle tape and paper on a ladder while you're securing the tape to the surface. Notice how this painting professional first extends the tape at least an arm's length from the roller before attaching it to the surface. He then pulls the machine along, applying the tape as he follows with his free hand, pressing it onto the surface. This allows you to apply the tape to longer distances faster. Be careful on those ladders, guys, when using a masking machine or not. Any wrong move can send you tumbling down. But of course, this guy's been doing it for a while, so he knows his limits. As you can tell, masking outside or inside corners or curves take a little more precision and time than the straight runs but it's always the details that make the finished product look amazing. Hey guys, here's some masking tips. Not all masking tape have the same stickiness level. Use extra sticky tape on uneven surfaces like the exterior walls and trim of this building, and use less sticky tape for more smooth, delicate surfaces like interior walls and glass. Always clean or dust the surfaces first before applying the tape. That ensures a longer stick time. If it's a house or building with siding, paint the trim and gutters before you paint the siding. If you use a semi-gloss paint on the trim, it will dry to a point where you can apply tape when you mask it off to paint the siding. The siding is usually painted last because the low sheen paint usually used on siding is more at risk of peeling off when the tape is removed. Running your hand over the tape as you mask helps to smooth it out and get rid of any bubbles or gaps that would allow paint to get in. Believe me, it will get in if it can. So make sure your edges are super sealed and tight, especially when masking windows.
Sometimes on older buildings, the edges where the wall and door frame or the wall and window frame meet create corners that can be rotted or dug out in places. Placing a single strip of painter's tape over these corner edges helps the tape to fill the gaps and act as a smooth corner or edge. Then you can mask it over easier and get a straighter, smoother edge. But if you have time before painting, mix some cement up, fill in all the gaps you can, smooth it out with a putty knife so you have a cleaner, more professional looking paint job after you take the masking off. The same if you have a wooden surface, just take some wood putty, fill in those holes or gaps, smooth it out so you can have a nice looking paint job at the end. This is why two people and two ladders are better than one, especially when you have hedges in front of a house. Stretching the tape to length with two people carrying it up the ladder and placing it on the trim definitely cuts down on the time it would take otherwise. All right, guys, you got it from the pros. That's how you use a masking machine. So go out and get one if you're gonna prep that house. It'll make your job a lot easier. Hit the like and subscribe button if you like what you saw today, and I'll see you next time.